What's up guys, it's Mike with Shadow Reefing coming back at you with another video and today it has been one year since I've been on YouTube. That means it's time to do a one year update on this 80 gallon deep blue shallow reef tank. Let's jump, let's get started with this. I'm gonna split this up into two different sections. The first section is gonna be the tank itself and kind of like the equipment with it and the next one will be the channel and how I'm kind of like changing as a I don't know, a YouTuber, I guess. I can't believe I'm saying I'm a YouTuber. Really weird. So let's jump into the tank. I don't have the original footage of the tank because I kind of just uploaded it on my iPhone at the time and just put it onto YouTube because I, you know, if I didn't do it then, I was probably never gonna do it. So the one thing you'll notice from the very first video is this section here. Had a huge monopore cap giant monopore cap. <clears throat> well, took it out and sold it to my friend Wayne. So it's now in his 125 because it was just taking up probably a third of this whole section over here. It was crazy. So I needed to re aquascape it and the fish are out more. But you know, whenever I'm filming, the fish are never out. Since then, not much has changed for the Euphilia section. Over here, you got my Euphilia Alley, as I like to call it. And then I did add all my blastos to one column. So those are just those giant blastos. I absolutely love them. They just look so good. And my Acro Island has really kind of just taken off, mostly cause you know, the bird's nest is just growing like crazy. I had like one little piece of my um, Monopora cap just laying around, so I put it there and all of a sudden it's like growing and taking over and shadowing out everything on this side. So swing on over. Duncans are still huge. Loving my Duncans, those are one of my favorites. Those bullseye mushrooms. I re-aquascaped um, this rock. I took, these are like the Micromusa Merletis, and then I believe this is the larger polyp of it. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But I did have an AK in here if you remember in my intro which I'm probably gonna have to redo it now since I've re-aquascaped the tank. This was an A-can, it was just getting stung by this coral, so I had to get it, get it out, and then I redid my A-can section. So, we'll swing on over to the other side of the tank. Oops, this way. Come on, there we go. This toadstool is huge, but there's a hole in the middle of it, and you're probably wondering why the heck is there a hole in the middle of it? Well, where's my clownfish? Where you at, buddy? I don't see you. Well, that clownfish has hosted it so hard that it has now completely dug a hole into this giant leather. Oh well, it, it's living, it's fine. So these Acan Echinata grown like crazy and stinging everything around it. So, had to move some stuff. Since then, since my first, since my first video, I added a Lobo in here, and I really do like that Lobo. It's really nice. And the top down of it looks really good. You can kind of see I have some Mummy Eye Chalice here, and that I fragged off and it's kind of stung everything around it. It's terrible. My Mummy Eye Chalice is a showpiece, but it's kind of just stinging everything. You can kind of see the tissue loss on the Setosa up here. And one of the staples on the channel, Dragon Soul Fabia. Absolutely love it. And then I decided to do an A-can alley. So right here, you can kind of see how I took all the A-cans and kind of put them together. I think it looks really good, honestly. Um, and that's about it for the livestock in this tank. Obviously, I still got my frag tank. Whoops. Swing over the frag tank. There we go. Frag tank, still looking good. Tons of corals. I actually added this section down here because I was running out of room. And I'm actually going to be turning my other 10 gallon anemone tank that was an enemy tank into a frag tank. I kind of put all the stuff here. And for some reason, this Garf Bonsai man has not done well. I did well in the sump and then I wanted it out so I could see it. And then all of a sudden it started RTNing on me or well, I guess STNing on me. So I don't know, but this is probably gonna be another little frag tank because I'm just running out of room. And I realized having a frag, um, or a frag system in my sump was not conducive for maintenance because you kind of forget about it and you let the green hair algae kind of just take over. So 
this tank it used to be an enemy tank now it's got one little clownfish and a couple rocks in it soon my friend wayne's gonna take this and try to recover it for me probably just give it to him at this point and then i will be you know moving all my softies over here and just dosing cow quasser once a day for it starting from the top down i'm still running the two older kessels and a radeon gen 3. i don't believe it's the pro version even though the guy told me it was the pro version and then i have two 36 inch t5s and these are like retrofit kits that i got for uh <clears throat> like supplemental fill light and i'm running ati blue plus and this is a nano blaster um t5 retrofit kit that i got off amazon and they've since gone up in price by a lot so let's keep on going down down to the gyre so i have two gyres one on each side and i kind of wish i could you know get away with not having a gyre here i put it on the other side in that little corner there by the overflow didn't really work out too well for me but you know it is what it is i would just want better water flow but i do really love looking at this and not having any obstruction swinging on to the other side i did have a i don't know back in this corner i had an extra mp10 and that mp10 i took off and moved over to the frag tank it's doing amazing the frag tank so <clears throat> just ran the gyre here i put i mounted the controller by the overflow not sure how smart it is to do that but you know i did it so haven't you know got any water on it in two and a half three years so i think i'm pretty safe to say it's fine and these are gyre xf 230 so they're the smallest ones so let's follow the water down goes over the overflow comes down comes across and drops down to a socket sump filter sock that is the mesh one because i absolutely hate cleaning filter socks hate it hate it hate it so i got the mesh ones because i really did not want to clean all the time and i kind of just run um filter floss in the sump sometimes so what i do is i take <clears throat> quilt batting and i put it in this little chamber here i have some egg crate and then it'll kind of catch it all but the main filtration is the skimmer here it's the sca 302 and it has done surprisingly well for over three years old i mean that skimmer is still going still pulling out stuff you know not the best skimmer in the world definitely not the worst but it's doing its job and i have it raised up on some egg crate and then i have the brightwell brick there some marine pure spheres in here and my refugium section turned into more like a catch-all marine pure spheres and that's about it i took the refugium offline when i did the um chato i had well i had chato in here and then i did uh the vibrant and then vibrant all of a sudden kind of nuked my chato but what can you say it got rid of all the hair algae and also got rid of all my chato hindsight probably should have taken it out and then i should have put it in a container but i'm running an apex in here the classic apex as you can see apex classic and then i have the nice tunzi osmolator the best one you can get because you know can't go wrong with a good osmolator and then my return pump i actually had a a larger j bow return pump we can't even see it because it's so dirty but whatever so that return pump was like rated for i think 10,000 liters and i had it like not even at 50 percent so then I put the smaller one that's only right at 3,000 liters and it is doing really well pushing the water to both tanks surprisingly because I only need 10 times turnover for the tanks. And most people are running less than 10 times turnover so it is what it is. I don't have any problems with it and it's doing really well so far. Um, yeah and as far as dosing I have the DP4 from JBAL and this thing has definitely lost its calibration for the calcium. The same pump has lost its calibration multiple times. I've changed it up and everything, but when I'm supposed to be dosing 10 milliliters, I only dose 9. So I kind of just adjust my uh, calcium intake based off of what I know. So if I put it at uh, 100 milliliters, I know it's only going to dose 90 milliliters. So I just kind of know that in my head. And then I do really like how these guys are. Come on, rotate. There we go. So these guys here the marine color um containers i think they're really great 
Now the problem with the calcium container that I found was that it would sometimes um, get too much siphon or not. It wouldn't siphon it out because the suction was too great in here and not enough air was getting in. So what I did was I drilled a little hole in it. You know, it doesn't do any damage to it. Well, I mean, it does do damage, but it doesn't hinder it in any way from keeping, you know, the liquid safe and stuff, but it's all good. So that is it for the equipment here. And the main thing that I did, thing I did was I got a battery backup. I'm not sure I had that battery backup when I started the channel. I think I got it in December of this year. Of not this year, 2019. Not sure this battery backup, lifesaver. Accidentally had my pumps turned off one time because I'm stupid, but the battery backup kept it running for 12 hours. So that was solid. I didn't know, I didn't even skip a beat. So that's it for the overview of the aquarium. I almost forgot to mention that my reef tank was featured on Bulk Reef Supplies BRS TV Reacts. It's probably the biggest thing that's happened to the tank or the channel well, this entire time. I'm honored to be on it. I mean, the channel keeps looking better and better. The tank is looking better and better. I cannot wait to see where this tank goes and where the future builds. Um, so as far as the equipment that I've gotten for the channel to help with the you know video quality, I have gotten the um, DJI Osmo 3 gimbal, which I'm still fumbling around with trying to take good pictures. And that's what you're seeing everything taken on here. I got the Polyp Lab Coral View lens version two. Did not like that at all. Hated it. Kind of gave it like an orange wash on my tank. And then I upgraded to the Reefing Art Coral View lens and that's what it's on now. So you're gonna see, I have it. I love it, it's great. I'd recommend it to anyone, check out that review. And then I have a lapel mic that I started using. And I think that's doing really well for the audio quality. <clears throat> and then I also have my handy dandy tripod that I always use, except for now, because I'm trying to get better at this, you know, filming gig that I'm not very good at yet. So as far as the equipment, I think the video quality has kind of improved. I've been through like three different free softwares to edit um, video. But the best one I found that's free is the DJI Mimo app. I've been editing everything in there, so hopefully you guys are liking the updated and upgraded video quality and edits, even though I'm still somewhat of a, well, a pretty much I'm a novice. But as far as that's concerned, hopefully the video quality keeps improving and everything keeps looking better because I really want to, you know, do a good job when I finally upgrade this tank and go to my 200 gallon whenever I pull the trigger on that. It's gonna be an Innovate Marine 200 gallon. And, you know, hopefully I can kind of give you guys some ideas if you're thinking about going that Innovate Marine route and getting a nice um, 200 gallon larger system. But I really do like my deep blue 80 gallon. It's been a great tank. I have never had any, you know, complaints about it, except for, you know, some scratches. I don't know, you can't see it on the camera, but there's a scratch right there. Drives me nuts. <laughs> so, all right guys, that's all I got for you for my one year update on my YouTube channel. And I hope you guys like it. There'll be many more videos to come. I have a ton in the woodwork and be on the lookout. I should be releasing one every week for the next like three or four weeks. So I'll catch you guys later.